Welcome to Big Data and Bruce today with Thomas from Mebar. Hey, hey Stefan, how are you? It's good. I'm I'm fascinated by all the stuff that's on the table. Uh, can you introduce yourself and all the goodies you brought today? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I uh, so my name is Thomas Shiran. I uh, run product management at uh, Mapr. Mapr. Um, we've been around for uh, I guess five years now. I, I joined uh, joined the company about uh, you know, four and a half years ago. And I've known Stefan for uh, for quite some time now. I think I've been at uh, <laughs> I think I've been at every Hadoop uh, every Hadoop conference, um, at least the major ones. Uh, I guess except the time when my second daughter was born. Then I had to I had to skip one. But you know. What can you do? <laughs> wow. um, but yeah, I mean, we have uh, you know, like uh, like we we like to do at MapR. I like to uh, wanted to kind of take it up a notch here. And, uh, <laughs> all the uh, <laughs> you know, we you have those uh, sessions with uh, with beer, and this time we have uh, beer and we have uh, hummus. And uh, nice. so the yeah, the theme here is Israel. Oh, I, I love hummus. I in fact um, two nights ago made my own hummus. You did? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And from scratch, not canned beans or something. No, no. You take the dry beans and you cook them. You let them sit. You cook them again. Um, all, all the good stuff. Um, you know, I'm vegan, so you have to, you know, yeah. take it up a notch. With the exactly. Vegan yeah. That's fantastic. I'm a big Hamas fan. So, what's the brew we're drinking today? Uh, dark lager beer. Uh, well, this is actually the uh, the most popular beer in Israel. So oh, it, it, it's kind of fitting with the. Oh uh, wow! With cool. The hummus. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Well, let me let go. In. Let's get going on the beer here. It's called the Gold Star. Yeah. Oops. Oh, all right. Here we go. So, what did you do before Meba? Before MapR, so uh, I was actually at Microsoft in uh, product management at Microsoft. Sorry, what, what's the company called? <laughs> it was a company that uh, you know is not so involved in the in the Hadoop space, but uh, um, is uh, does a lot of other things, I guess. Um, recently switched their CEO. I heard about that. So, um, what kind of area did you uh, work at Microsoft? I actually, was uh, network security. So we. Oh, cool. We were building a uh, an enterprise firewall VPN product, mm -hmm. um, which is actually used uh, quite quite a bit. Yeah, and uh, before Microsoft. Uh, well, Microsoft, I was doing product management for that uh, product, and then before that, I was doing engineering. I was yeah. a software engineer, uh, and then before that, I was at uh, IBM Research. I was a, a researcher at IBM Research in in Haifa in Israel. Oh, okay. So, how's the big data scene over there in Israel? Yeah. That's is a good it? question. You know, I uh, I always go back at least once a year just for for family reasons and all that. And uh, you know, every time I do I, I go there, I uh, I spend about a week kind of doing uh, customer visits and uh, and meeting a lot of companies that are using Hadoop. And uh, you know, some of them are, are Mapar customers now. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of tech in in Israel. I think it's uh, it's the second most densely uh, populated area in terms of uh, startups after Silicon Valley. So. Uh, you know, you can imagine there's a lot of big data use uh, happening there. There's also uh, OEM uh, uh, opportunities there, where you know some companies in Israel take take the Mapar product, they make it part of their product, which yep. they then sell to telcos, for example, and and uh, other similar uh, examples like that. It's amazing. For also for us, we see a lot of use cases and companies coming to us, and um, I, I, the whole startup scene is just fascinating. I mean, everybody in the world tries to replicate Silicon Valley, and I think the only only area that really nailed us is um, kind of the Tel Aviv area in in, in that. Or it is, yeah, it's uh, kind of Tel Aviv, Herzliya, um, that whole area. Yeah, have you been amazing. there? I'm going there very soon. Oh, you are. I, okay. I never was there, unfortunately. So, um, cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Let's. Try the good brew here. So tell me what you think about Israeli beer. I love it. It's really good. I don't like the American beers too much. You know, where I always think they they taste like cooked socks, like the IPAs <laughs> or something. I don't know. I don't get one with them. It's really good. Yeah, it's I a think it's a people... like a lager. You know, it's not too aggressive, not too hoppy. Good, good stuff. Yeah, should I give you some uh, some hummus here? Oh yeah, let's get started. Let's with, get started with, with some stuff. hummus mm. before we get into the more complex things. I, you know, I think I have a hummus addiction, to be honest. <laughs> it's just so good. Kids okay. have more hummus, a lot of protein. You know, um, good stuff for you. This is also the best pizza you can find in uh, in the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. Where, where do you get this from? This is actually a place in Palo Alto called the uh, Orange Hummus. So, oh okay. Uh, that was their commercial, I guess. Oh, cool. I mean, 
you don't mind, I will just put a little bit down. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. So just traditionally go in there. Oh, oh rip and uh, yeah, you just okay. tear, tear a little bit off and uh, you can just, just put it in there it. and then. Uh, mm. All right, future, good. future big data and pros uh, visitors. You have to. The bar is higher. You have to keep up with the map bar, folks. So let's talk a little bit about uh, map bar. What's going on? Any cool updates recently? Yeah, I mean it's uh, you know we just wrapped up uh, I guess 2000, 2013 a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a it was a great year. I think uh, you know the Hadoop uh, the Hadoop market grew and we uh, we expanded a lot as a company. Um, we've topped uh, five hundred uh, paying customers now. Oh wow! Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, so it's been a lot of a lot of work, a lot of excitement. Um, the number of employees has obviously uh, probably doubled or tripled in the last year. Oh wow! Um, internationally, we have uh, we have offices now in uh, I guess in Asia. We have Korea, Japan, Singapore, Australia. All offices. All, yeah, teams actually. Wow. Map our teams in in all these locations. Um, Australia, India, China now, um, and then across Europe, Germany, which is uh, you know your favorite your favorite place, right? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> the UK, France, uh, team in Sweden now as well. Oh, um, wow. So yeah, a lot of international expansion. It's uh, it's been fun. That's pretty amazing. It's really international. Um, what are what are people doing? Is it different in like what people do in the US versus uh, in Europe? I mean, use case wise, or um, are there buckets? Yeah, I'd say the US is probably still ahead in terms of uh, the maturity of of the customer base. Although, you know, we have. Uh, uh, Actually, a significant number of customers in in, in these other countries. Um, you know, one one great use case in in Japan is uh, it's actually a beverage company. So this is oh. one of the biggest beverage companies. Uh, uh, you know, beer and, and whiskey in in Japan. Oh, oh nice. And uh, and yeah, they have some 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 pretty pretty cool use cases. So I think uh, yeah, you look at the standard kind of marketing use cases that people do with Hadoop. Mm -hmm. They have all of those, but they also have these uh, these really cool vending machines Ooh. where they're the they're doing image Japanese detection thing. and they're they're they have a video camera that's looking at you and kind of recommending a beverage to you when you walk <laughs> up to it. So, <laughs> based on based on what you used before, I think they look at they kind of look at your image and compare it to other people that had similar characteristics, things like that. Oh, and wow. so it's, uh, that's, that's a pretty use, pretty cool use case. Yeah. That's so majority, majority, yeah. majority report where you basically based on your, um, you know, like what was it? Retina, get the advertisement. Well, I guess we live in the future, huh? That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I, I just wish uh, the latest Mac OS X version wouldn't be that buggy uh, if we live in the future. Um, so, <clears throat> I mean, we see a lot of Hadoop deployments, but what really jumps out is that you guys have just massive deployments, like really from like all the companies we're working uh, or knowing of, working with, knowing of, like, you know, it really jumps out. You guys have like the hundreds of machines deployments. So what is kind of the, why is that? Why are you guys kind of the first choice for gigantic Hadoop environments? That's a, it's a, it's a Great point. Um, you know, I think it's 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 true. We have. Uh, I mean, it's it's hard to even count how many of these customers that I mentioned. You know, over five hundred paying customers are are in the hundreds of servers. There's there's actually a lot of them. Hmm. Um, you know, we have the largest deployment in financial services with over a thousand nodes. Wow. Um, largest. How much better by this that thousand nodes now? Well, those are like uh, I think twelve drives and uh, either two or three terabytes each. So. Um, that's a lot of petabytes, you know. I'm not going to try to do the math here on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but really what happens, if, if you look at kind of how, how these, these uh, Hadoop users evolve, I mean, the most, the, the, the greatest number of, uh, of Hadoop users are the ones that are kind of in dev and test, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's tens of thousands of those, if, if not more, right? And they tend to be, you know, one, two, three nodes, right? So mm -hmm. developer, you know, maybe downloading, you know, the MapR sandbox or a VM from, from one of our competitors and, and playing around with it. Um, but you know it's 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 very small, and then you get to you know kind of the first production use case. So typically, when someone deploys Hadoop, they deploy you know the first use case, right? And that could be 10, 20, maybe 30 nodes. Um, and there's a, a smaller number of those uh, out there in the wild, um, but it becomes more interesting, right? They're doing something kind of meaningful to the business. Mm -hmm. um, and then the real production deployments, that's where you get into you know multiple use cases running on the platform. Oftentimes, these are hundreds of hundreds of servers in a, in a cluster, 
and you know the value that Mapbar brings to the table, a lot of it applies to that production deployment. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's kind of what we uh, what we had always focused on was you know let's make Hadoop production ready or, mm-hmm. or enterprise grade so people can actually run it uh, yeah. in mission critical kind of use cases. Mm-hmm. What are some of the use cases you're seeing with the customers? Like, what are, what are your favorite one? My favorite one. Um, You'll, you know, my favorite one is actually, it's not going to be one of the more popular use cases, but the uh, the Aadhaar project in uh, in India, actually. So, yeah. Can you tell a, us more about it? I think that's just a ginormous project. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a really cool one, too, and it's it's really valuable, I mean, in terms of the, what, what it's doing in, in that country. Um, so, you know, India has uh, over a billion people living in the country. I think it's uh, something like 1.25 billion people. And one of the challenges there is that uh, about half of the population doesn't even have an identity. There is mm-hmm. no, you know, uh, social security uh, number or anything like that, and that prevents these people from opening bank accounts. It prevents them from getting uh, uh, medical uh, medical care. It prevents them from uh, getting uh, uh, government services, uh, uh, government aid, things like that. It also encourages a lot of fraud in, mm-hmm. the, in the overall yeah. system, right? Um, and so. And what the Aadhaar project is doing is it's basically building the world's largest biometric database. Mm-hmm. And the idea is to provide every uh, resident of India uh, an, an identification so they can get government aid and medical services and, and open a bank account and do commerce and things like that. And it's lifting a lot of people out of poverty. Yeah, right? it's so, fantastic. Yeah, and, and, and I think it's, it's up to about 750 million people already in the database mm-hmm. uh, I think it's about 10 petabytes of data. Mm-hmm. And so for every person, um, you have the uh, um, you have the person's uh, the, the, the photo of the face, you have mm-hmm. uh, the 10 fingerprints, the two iris scans. Mm-hmm. So you have all that information for every, every one of these people. And then it's not just collecting that information and storing it, it's also enabling every point of service in India to also be able to verify that identity. Mm-hmm. Because now you need the bank and, and you know every other service provider to be able to check your identity. Right. And so that's a system that needs to respond within 200 milliseconds wow. at very, very high uh, kind of uh, load in terms of transactions per second. So uh, so we're really happy that we're powering that from a, yeah. uh, from the back end, from a Hadoop and, and database standpoint. Um, so that's that's one of the one of the projects I'm most excited about. Is that HBase? You said database, or is there more yeah. magic, magic stuff in between? Anything you can talk about from architectural perspective? Yeah, sure. If you look at uh, so if you look at our M7 product, that's mm-hmm. kind of our our, uh, our highest edition. So mm-hmm. we have M3 is our free edition, mm-hmm. M5 is our enterprise edition, and M7 is our enterprise database edition. Yeah. Uh, what it provides is really an in like I like to call it an in Hadoop database. Yeah. Right? It's uh, um, so we build kind of into our data platform, which has always kind of been a distributed file system. Now also has an integrated database in it, uh, which exposes the HBase API. Uh, but provides much much higher performance and much more reliable kind of low consistent uh, uh, consistent low uh, low latency. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's 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 the technology uh, um, that a lot of our customers now are using to kind of expand Hadoop into more uh, operational use cases, mm-hmm. right? So we all know traditionally Hadoop has been uh, uh, great at doing things like uh, more analytics. Mm-hmm. You know, originally batch, but then yeah. uh, recently people talking more about interactive use cases. Um, you know, we believe a lot in the fact that um, you know Hadoop will expand needs to expand to serve not just the analytics use cases but also the operational use cases. Mm-hmm. So providing kind of that full uh, platform that does uh, all of those different types of use cases on one on one platform. Mm-hmm. That's a gigantic and it's such a wonderful project where <clears throat> you know when 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 I envisioned the whole thing started on you know little open source project. I mean, in my wildest dreams, I wouldn't think you could have so much impact with technology, right? It's it's just wonderful. Um, yeah, yeah. What are the kind of more standard use cases you guys see? Um, I mean, that's a that's a fantastic project. But yeah. what is kind of the day to day bother and bread for your platform? You know, I think uh, advertising and marketing are, are pretty common uh, common use cases across the board, and it. And is that more in the ad companies, or is that more kind of the traditional big companies trying to understand their customers? Or you know, it's 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 actually both. Mm-hmm. So um, you know, you look at some of our customers, like the Rubicon project, which is uh, the largest ad exchange in the U.S. in terms of audience reach, mm-hmm. and they're 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 doing ninety billion uh, auctions, ad auctions every day. Okay, um, wow. And each of those auctions is you know probably a dozen or more bids. So all these bids are 
you know, we're talking about trillions of events every month that are processed in the cluster, mm -hmm. um, and they, uh, you know, in the MapR environment, and they they predict the prices uh, mm -hmm. that the auctions are going to settle at, and all sorts of things like that. Uh, but then, if you look at other uh, many other customers that we have in uh, across telco and, and retail, they're doing. Um, these are customers that have you know, tens to hundreds of millions of end users or end customers, and they're doing everything from uh, better ad targeting to churn analysis, um, all those types of, uh, of use cases. Um, what kind of product enhancements does that try for you guys? Like, where is it? You touch a little bit on the low latency requirements, but mm -hmm. where do you really see? Hadoop as it is today, you said a little bit expanding into kind of the, you know, near real time ish production mm -hmm. use cases. What other functionality dimensions um, are driven by those use cases? Well, I think, you know, I think the, the customers that are doing these things, and I think you mentioned earlier how you see a lot of these, a lot of our customers are kind of doing big deployments that are, that are uh, really impactful to their business, right? And um, when a company wants to do that, they need, a set of kind of enterprise grade dependability uh, characteristics, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, they want uh, true high availability, right? One that self heals automatically. Mm -hmm. They want uh, real consistent snapshots. They want disaster recovery across uh, data centers. Um, and so, you know, every Hadoop vendor now says, well, we have those things and we're, we've added those things. We've caught up with MapR, sure. right? Um, but there's 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 a difference between kind of building those into the architecture and, and you know, doing Just something at a marketing it. checkbox, right? right? Like adding it. Yeah, it's yeah. like, um, oh yeah, we uh, it's a tower of Pisa, and we just put something on. We the added side it, there. right? Yeah. And, and <laughs> so, I mean, you know, let's take an example: of snapshots, right? Mm -hmm. So, MapR, we you know, we provided snapshots from day one, mm -hmm. um, much like you would see in an, uh, any other uh, um, in an, an enterprise storage or an enterprise database, right? The ability to go back in time. Let's say yeah. a user accidentally deleted data, mm -hmm. or you had an outage, and you wanted to go back to a, mm -hmm. a consistent point in time. Mm -hmm. So. It is something that you know enterprises expect, right? You wouldn't buy uh, a NAS or a database if you couldn't go back Snapchat. and do point in time recovery, yeah. right? Um, well, MapR is the only Hadoop distribution that provides that uh, from a Hadoop standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and our competitors they've they've tried to add that to uh, to HDFS, and, and the result is is really inconsistent snapshots, or what they they sometimes call fuzzy snapshots, but. Mm -hmm. I mean, people don't. Yeah, well, you that's don't, a nice marketing term, by the way. It, it's great. You know, you don't. You know, it's <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a fuzzy snapshot. <laughs> it's more or less consistent. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's sometimes consistent. That let's would be the hope right it is consistent. But let's hope. Let's hope it is right. Uh, the whole thing just crashed. Let's hope. <laughs> yeah, um, and you know, as the as the, the Hadoop market has, has matured over the last mm -hmm. year and will continue to mature over the next the next year or two years. You know, people people stop buying those they, you know the, yeah. those arguments, right? You know, yeah. they they don't compromise when they buy a storage system or a database. You know, they're not going to compromise when they buy a, yeah. a Hadoop uh, environment. Hmm. And what's the secret sauce behind all of this? I mean, you touched a little bit that you built this in from scratch, but um, you know, where where's the magic of MapR start and where's it pulling it all the way through? Yeah. Well, you know, maybe let's uh, let's use the whiteboard here. Yeah. And, uh, and look at what what is the map art distribution? What is what is mm -hmm. the overall architecture, right? Yeah. So, you know, it all starts with um, maybe I'll, I'll move out of the way so it's easier to see. It all starts with a, a collection of over twelve different, uh, maybe fifteen even now, uh, open source Apache community projects. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have things like uh, we have Hive here, and um, you know, Pig, uh, Flume, and we just announced Yarn. So many, many different projects here, mm -hmm. um, and these are just a few of them. You know, there's Zookeeper and Scoop and uh, Stinger, Tez uh, coming into play. You can run Impala on the platform. That, that's part of it as well. And what we do is we've added our own uh, uh, our own data platform. So underneath here, you have the MapR data platform. Mm -hmm. So this is M I'm going to call it MDP here for short, but it's yeah. uh, this is the MapR data platform. And what this is really is, is two things. First of all, it's a distributed file system. And it's also a NoSQL database in one, mm -hmm. right? So think of this as, you know, we could call this, that's going to be hard to see, but we could call this MapRFS here um, and MapRDB here. But really, it's a single service. So files and, and tables are, are integrated. They're part mm -hmm. of the namespace. They're protected in terms of snapshots and DR the exact same way. Um, so it's one, one process running on every node. 
that's the map our data platform mm -hmm. um, from a from a file standpoint it's fully read write so okay. you can uh, you don't have the limitations you are probably aware of with uh, with HDFS right? right so you can modify files you can do uh, concurrent reads and writes mm -hmm. and then we also uh, expose that through an NFS interface. So okay. if you look at the interfaces for the MapR data platform, uh, clearly we have the, uh, of course, the Hadoop file system API, yeah. right? So that's the Hadoop file system API. And this is the same API that's exposed by uh, HDFS or Amazon's S3 implementation mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. Google Cloud Storage, yep. uh, uh, their integration with Hadoop. And we also have an NFS interface here, which is a standard storage interface and you know, customers use that extensively for everything from loading data into the cluster. So they could, for example, maybe export data from uh, a lot of our customers. They'll export data from Teradata using standard Teradata utilities, um, right? Or they'll use things like R and SAS. And because we expose a standard file interface, just like any network attached storage, mm -hmm. you just mount the MapR cluster and you get and one giant it. NAS. That's it. Wow. That's um, cool. Yeah, and I was actually, be before coming here, I was watching... Uh, uh, a video you did with Eric Nakbar. Yeah. He described how he was, uh, yeah, you know, just the reasons modded. he was using MapR, yeah. and you know, he loved <laughs> the fact that you could. That this was kind yeah, of him. It's, I mean, it, those integration pieces are so critical for customers, right? Yeah. If you if you go to a customer and say, "Oh, great! Well, we have this magic, cool storage thing," and by the way, you have to write a few Perl scripts and some Java to get data in. They look at you like, oh, "Okay, <laughs> you know, that's it's just like twenty years back." Yeah. Rather than you know, yeah. step forward. You know, it's kind of analogous to, uh, you know, what would you rather use to keep your your documents here? Would you put them on FTP server or mm -hmm. would you put them in a network of that storage? Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously a lot easier when you don't have to kind of use a tool to get data in and out. Right? Yeah. Like, um, and then there's the HBase API, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's the standard interface in Hadoop for cables, right? So we expose that, and that's the way you basically read that's and write the to the tables. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, cool. So that's kind of the overall. We we add the, the uh, our management innovation as well. So this is management. We call this the MapR control system. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of uh, kind of what it is. And the nice thing here is that there's so much innovation happening here at this layer as well. So you'll get projects like uh, uh, Spark and Shark and uh, MLlib and Yarn and Hive and Pig. And I can go on and on with all these mm -hmm. different projects that are either in the distribution or coming this year uh, as fully supported projects in our distribution. And then we add our own innovation that provides you know value beyond what you're able to uh, to get, and actually kind of broadens the uh, uh, the use cases that are possible with this platform. So that's so my understanding too is that um, your the map our file system you guys completely rewrote um, also in a different language than the Hadoop distributed file system, and and I think you guys had some. Some DNA there, so it's not the first file system that your core engineers wrote. Is that kind of the yeah. story of MapR? Um, well, that's that's you, one of the that's you, one of the things we've done, right? So you know, we we I think we spend over we invest over fifty percent of our engineering at this layer. Yeah. Um, but we've certainly done a lot of innovation here um, very early on too. And you know, three of us are MC three of us are CTO and and co-founder. Um, he actually came from Google, where he was. Uh, uh, he was on the Google search and, and big table teams, mm -hmm. uh, kind of driving that from within Google. Uh, and Google, as, as you know, we all know, is kind of ahead of the game here when it yeah. comes to, to big data. So he had that experience of running MapReduce and big data at scale at the, the, at the best place possible, right? Yeah. Um, and then before that, he was at Spinnaker Networks, which yeah. was acquired by NetApp and, and did their, uh, their clustered uh, file system. Great. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, this combination is, is really what we're... Uh, we're excited about in terms of expanding the use cases that are possible with Hadoop. Hmm. Okay. Well, I will have a little bit more hummus, more hummus here and a drink, and we make a little break from Big Data and Bruce with Thomas from the bar. See you guys soon. Cheers. <laughs>